There are three Heisman Trophy contenders worth betting on right now before kickoff of Week Zero. But I need to get something off my chest first. I, Edward Egros, am not normally a conspiracy theorist. We walked on the moon, the Earth is not flat, and Elvis Presley is not living on some remote planet. Now, why am I bringing these facts up in a football podcast, you ask? Well, last year, something unusual happened that may very well never happen again. And it takes belief that outside factors may never allow it to happen again. Let me explain. Welcome to the Football Analytics Show podcast. I'm Edward Egros as part of our preview of the upcoming football season. Oftentimes, preseason Heisman chatter begins with figuring out which players will be on playoff contenders. But last year, quarterback Jaden Daniels, whose LSU Tigers were never in contention for the college football playoff, who lost a game in November, wound up winning the honor. In fact, twice in the last decade has a quarterback from a non-playoff contending team won the Heisman. But if you look at where the teams boasting Daniels and Louisville's Lamar Jackson finished in the final regular season standings of the college football playoff, they were both 13th. The new playoff is expanding to 12 teams. And as we saw last year, there's a lot of care and concern when it comes to that last team in. It's not necessarily conspiratorial to believe that only players on playoff contenders can win the Heisman. So sticking to who can finish in the top 12, even if the criteria is fluid, is a sound approach. As I've said in years past, it's not a good idea to bet on the preseason favorite. USC's Caleb Williams was a 5-1 to favorite. Instead, it went to the second place Daniels. Oregon's Dylan Gabriel is the favorite at last check this year, but now I will recommend three other quarterbacks who can have better seasons. Every quarterback who's won the Heisman over the last several years finished at or near the top nationally in passing expected points added. Offensive passing success is more important than anything else, and voters have come around to this fact. Among returning quarterbacks, and not counting Gabriel, the player with the highest total EPA passing last year was Georgia's Carson Beck, and his odds are slightly longer than Gabriel's. You know Georgia will make the playoff. They're listed at minus 600 to make it on FanDuel. Those are the second shortest odds to make the playoff, trailing only Ohio State. The power rank also has Georgia number one in its member preseason rankings, which combine market win totals and data-driven methods. What you may not know is Beck's background story. The senior Bulldog was a former Mr. Football at Florida. He led his high school to a state championship. He played baseball and basketball as a well-rounded athlete. And more importantly than anything else, he embraced the role of following two-time national champion quarterback Stetson Bennett. The physical tools were always there, and they were on full display last year. Beck finished fourth among qualified quarterbacks in completion rate at nearly 70% on intermediate passes from 10 to 19 air yards. He had the fifth lowest turnover-worthy throw percentage at 1.6%, so he can move the sticks consistently, all while protecting the football. Lastly, he was sacked just nine times in 2023. Beck also has the consistency of returning to the same program with the same coaching staff, notably offensive coordinator Mike Bobo. The offensive line should also be elite. The schedule should be tougher, but even one loss should not prevent the Dogs from reaching and winning the SEC championship, which could determine who's eligible from this conference. Carson Beck offers value. Our second bet worth making also resides in the SEC, but as part of a program you might be paying little attention to. We've established a Heisman winner must lead his team to the playoff, but because so much talent is saturated in the SEC, looking for the quarterback whose team will finish third or fourth could make psychological sense. The top two play each other in Atlanta, and the loser is out. Third place could win their remaining three games and have a large enough body of work to finish at least 12th. You know who did that twice in the last three years, don't you? It's Ole Miss. That means their quarterback, Jackson Dart, at 14-1. to 1. 
he is worth a play. Being Gatorade National Player of the Year isn't necessarily predictive of future success, nor is being a transfer from USC and having a lot of ties to Arizona State. What does help him, though, is stability. Dart is entering his third season as the starter at the Grove, as well as his third season with head coach Lane Kiffin, who's developing a reputation as an offensive revolutionary, such as turning Blake Sims into a star when Kiffin was the offensive coordinator at Alabama, or once he took over at Ole Miss, developing Matt Corral into a hot shot. Kiffin also understands the importance of play-action passing, having Dart use it on 46% of his dropbacks, the 11th highest rate per PFF among qualifying QBs. Now, if you think that's high, consider 2021, another banner year for the Rebels, when Corral used play-action at the highest rate in college football. As for Dart, even when dealing with quarterback competition those first two years, Dart seized that gig and never looked back. In 2022, he amassed nearly 3,000 passing yards and more than 600 on the ground, all while boasting the highest play-action passing rate, just like Corral did the previous season. Then, in 2023, he accrued more than 3,300 passing yards. His PFF offensive grade last year ranked 13th nationally among all qualifiers, and that ranking is much higher when you filter out those who left for the NFL. The Power Ranks member preseason rankings has the Rebels ninth, potentially in a comfortable spot to make the college football playoff. The road won't be easy as games against Georgia, Oklahoma, and LSU are looming. It's always been this way with the Rebels, having had to fight in a gauntlet of an SEC West for a long time now. Ole Miss has risen to the occasion before. They can do it again with Jackson Dart earning Heisman love in the process. Finally, let's have some fun and look at a long shot. Not a massive one, but a reasonable long shot. For better or worse, college football has a knack for focusing on the Blue Bloods. Heisman winners often hail from these schools, like Alabama, like Oklahoma and LSU. Ole Miss may not be one of those schools, but they've been in the spotlight long enough under Kiffin to where Dart is an option. Kansas State may not be either, but the Big 12 arguably is bereft of that notable name. A program has to win the conference and make the playoff, and though they have the second shortest odds to do so behind Utah, there's value in backing Wildcats quarterback Avery Johnson at 25 to 1. There is a sample size problem, granted, given he's only had one true offensive start in the Pop Tarts Bowl. Johnson is only a sophomore, but that bowl game was enough to snag the spotlight. 14 of 31, 178 passing yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. He also added 71 on the ground with a score. But his performance against Texas Tech may be that one thing attracting so much buzz. Coming in near the end of the first quarter, Johnson rushed for a total of five touchdowns, tying a school record. As head coach Chris Kleiman put it, the Red Raiders, quote, we're giving us the quarterback run, and that's why we stayed with Avery, because if they're going to play a deep safety and give you quarterback run, then we're going to make people pay for it, end of quote. There are challenges on the schedule, but the likes of Tulane, Arizona, and Oklahoma State do not move the needle like the best in the Big Ten and SEC do. But with longer odds come more difficult arguments to make. The Power Ranks member preseason rankings has K-State 17th, so they do have some work to do to prove they can make the playoff. It may have to be winning the Big 12 or nothing, but for a program with as much stability as any, it may be worth taking a flyer on Avery Johnson. Here's one more nugget to consider. In a previous episode, I also discussed Miller Moss at 40 to 1 being a serious option. The USC quarterback is playing for Lincoln Riley, who developed three previous Heisman contenders. However, there is a quarterback competition in Los Angeles. Jaden Mayava, a 6 foot 4, 220 pound redshirt sophomore, is a transfer from UNLV. The market may be trying to tell us something here. Again, Moss is 40 to 1, but Mayava is 65 to 1, suggesting Moss should start, but the leash may be short, or there's enough time in the offseason for Mayava to earn the starting nod and keep it. It may be worth keeping up with the latest news out of USC, given the Trojans should be in playoff contention, and Riley's history developing talent. Long shots from the preseason can win this award. 
The Football Analytics Show is brought to you by the Power Rank Sports Betting Newsletter. Looking for some action on any given weekend? Well, this is the free service for you as Five Nuggets Saturday gives Ed Fang's curated list of tips and analytics. This includes insights from people like me, Edward Egros. To sign up for free, go to thepowerrank.com. That is Ed Fang's site for better data-driven sports betting information. Once again, that's thepowerrank.com. Members of the Power Rank get access to all of Ed Fang's best college football and NFL predictions. If you sign up right now, you'll also get access to an assortment of NFL preseason bets, including quarterback interceptions props. To learn more about becoming a member, go to thepowerrank.net. That is a URL that will take you to a place on the site where you can learn more about premium content. Thanks again for listening to this installment of the Football Analytics Show. This is Edward Egros. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram for my latest insights at Ed with Sports. That's at Ed with Sports. Take care, everybody.